through the uh, test tent number 18 and hear what we had to say. If not, I guess you're just going to have to study up on that one. Yeah. So we're at number 19. Number 19, how to name the acids formed from eight and eight polyatomic ions. I yeah. ate something icky. I ate something icky. For lunch. Yes. That was a little upset. <clears throat> too much acid, a little yeah. acid reflux. There's a um, uh, little with, with, with you guys, you should have have some notes on, on a flow chart right. for how to how to actually um, come up with these names. Eight ions, eight ions produce ick acids. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you've done your work on this, right. it, it, it makes sense. And, there ought to be a little bit of a flow to it. Right. So, uh, phosphate. The phosphate ion, ends in A-T-E, will produce phosphoric acid. acid. The phosphite ion will produce, believe it or not, phosphorus phos right. acid. Okay? Right. And was there something, do you do something for the ites and the uses? I don't remember that. Like I ate something in no. his, how I remember the, those, but. No. Okay, so you're matching the correct ending, and again, that's uh, affected by the oxidation number of the uh, non-oxygen atom in the ion. Uh, number 20? Mm, 20, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, how to write the formula for a specific oxy acid. So if we, if we give you uh, phosphorus, Acid, right. you mm -hmm. have to come up with the correct formula. You have to remember that the us acid was produced from an ite ion. Right, so you need to know if it's phosphorus acid, then you're talking phosphite, and you know your formula for phosphite. That's an um, any, so it went from four oxygens to three oxygens, minus three charge. It would have to have three hydrogens in front, which make it an acid. Uh, to balance that out, so that would be H3PO3. Hopefully you'll be able to see the orange uh, marker there. Well, you said it. Okay. 21. How base is our name? Um, hello. What makes something an acid is hydrogen, which make, what makes something a base is the hydroxide ion. Hydroxide. Ion. So, hydroxide ion. Uh, hydroxide ion. So a base is going to be an ionic compound. Mm -hmm. And we name it like the other ones. We name the metal ion or the cation, and then we say hydroxide. Yep. Just, right? just like hydroxide. any other ionic compound. I guess it could be ammonium hydroxide too. So. Mm. Okay, 22. 22. Um, how the law of definite composition affects uh, compounds. Well, it, it shows how they're put together. Well, yeah. Right? Yes. Um, and, and, that, and that that one compound is always going to be in the same proportion by mass. By mass. It's always going to be in the same proportion by mass. It doesn't matter if you have uh, 5 million tons or 5 grams. Right. It's always going to be in the same proportion by mass. Same ratio, same, same percent. Ratio. Right. Um, remember back to the fasteners and rings lab? There you go. Way back. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's like the stuff we did before, they have yeah. to know now. Right. Who knew that would happen? Right. All right, test hit number 23. How to write the formula when given the name of a binary molecular compound? Molecular means covalently bonded. Binary means two different kinds of atoms. So a name will be something fancy schmancy like diphosphorus pentoxide. What? Ooh. Diphosphorus? Pentoxide. I saw I saw an article in a in a paper about diphosphorus pentoxide. No, no, no. That there was a huge chemical spill oh. of dihydrogen monoxide. Dihydrogen monoxide. Oh it took God. all day long to try to get this spill under control, and it was completely right. unsuccessful. Right. It, it, it was, like it was across the entire region. That's that's the worst one. Yes. Uh, diphosphorus. Di is two, so that's phosphorus two. Uh, pentoxides, so we have our oxygen and pent, you know that, penta, uh, the prefixes. It's the prefix for five. Okay. okay. Um, number 24 involves uh, writing the correct stock system name, 
Roman numeral, uh, when given the formula of a transition metal containing compound. Okay, and you've done a lot of these. Uh, you know transition metals could have more than one oxidation state, and you're going to look to the anion, what it's attached to, and how many there are, and what it, the anion's charge is to figure out what the charge is on the transition metal. Yep. Make that charge a Roman numeral. Yeah, by the time the test comes, you've done at least 100 of these. Right. All right, test tip number 25. What the eight and ike endings mean for polyatomic uh, ions, or the composition of the ion. Didn't we do that already? We did something just like it. It, it, was, it was worded yeah. differently. Oh, kind it was, of. It was worded differently, but... So we talked much. about the difference between the eights and ites, nitrate, nitrite, and so on. If you look at all those that end in eight and ite, what element do they have in common? Oxygen. Oxygen. Right. All right, 26. Number 26, how to name a binary molecular compound when given the formula. Well, so that's, that's just the opposite of that one, right? Yeah, if we give you the formula, can you translate these numbers into the name? Di, hydrogen, pentoxide. Okay, so there weren't too many of those on the monster. There were a few yeah. here and there. Um, there were enough. But th that's pretty yeah. easy to get. Yeah. Test hit number 27, define chemical formula. Uh, look it up. My, okay. my students hate it when they say that. I know. But you know what? It's I a didn't definition. think you were going to say It's a definition. Let's Let's go. Go. Find it. Find and it. I'm going to short answer. Number 28. Uh, how do I identify the exact charge on the ion in a given formula? You know what? If I reflect onto yes. the, the chapter 20 test, mm -hmm. which the students just took, mm -hmm. they had this question, it was on that test. It was, it, they had to determine the, yeah. the charge on magnesium in a, yeah. in, a, in a particular compound. Right. And so, this is an old question. Okay. This so is recycled. It's a recycle. Um, you know, be aware that uh, uh, the ion you might be trying to find mm -hmm. is a transition, a metal. transition metal, but you know how to do that by now. Mm -hmm. So, look at what it's attached to. Do it. 29, how to identify the number of specific cations needed for a specific chemical formula uh, when the stock system name is given. So, we'll tell you that it is copper two, copper Roman numeral two, and we're gonna tell you that it's gonna bond with sulfur. And you need to basically be able to write the formula and tell us how many of each atom are to attach to each other. Yeah. Pretty simple. But make sure your answer is clear. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting really sketchy work on some of the short answers. Make sure your answer is clear. It, it's you need two of these and three of these and write that out. Right. Don't just put two and circle it and three and circle it. Yeah, this was like mishmash on the paper and you can't tell what question they're really answering. If, if yeah. it's their work that they're doing or if it's actually right. the answer to the problem. Right. Do your work. Sound it out for yourself, mm -hmm. but once you figure out what the answer is, make sure it's going to be crystal clear for us. Right. This is your test. It's your opportunity to tell us what you know. Don't make us guess that this is what we think you're trying to say. Yeah. All right. Number 30? 30. 30. Uh, how to write the correct formula for a compound made of only polyatomic Only polyatomic only ions? Only polyatomic. It's probably got a lot can of you, atoms in it. Can you do that? Oh, that's right. There is a, a very common right. polyatomic cation. Right. And yeah, there are really like two positive cations. And it could combine with, with any, of those. any number of, of polyatomic anions. And right. we'll, we'll tell you which ones we You saw like. a lot of these on the monster. Right. Look for something that starts with that ammonium ion, basically. Mm -hmm. with ammonium or mercury, too, are your only choices. Right. And uh, any of those other polyatomic ions, but you have to know your polyatomic ions. Yeah. And since we tell you flat out at the bottom of the test hints, you absolutely, completely, really, really, really must know these polyatomic ions, for heaven's sakes, learn those. Yes. And, ooh, 31, uh, how to name three specific compounds and explain why they do or do not need Roman numerals and or prefixes. So. 
Uh, you will have examples of a transition metal compound that would need Roman numerals. You'll have an example of a molecular compound Which that would, would need, need the prefixes. dyes and tries and prefixes and that kind of stuff. And you'll have an example of a plain old regular ionic compound that doesn't need either of those because the cation only has one option, right. uh, one possible charge. But make sure you answer all three parts. Okay, a lot of times, I'll, the, I'll see students say, oh, well, that needs a three. What? Right. A three Roman numeral, a three subscript, a what? Right. A three prefix, yeah, try, I didn't try. Know. Right. Um, so be specific, and you know, there'll probably be a multiple point problem. So yeah. make sure use, you answer all of it. Use some space, you know, the back of the answer sheet's blank, use some space, sound it out, right. figure out what you want your answer to be, and then, and then come back and write something that's appropriately intelligent. Right. for a high school chemistry student in, right. in March. Completely written and so on. Yes. Okay. That's all it. Good. That's it. Um, we've got lots of practice throughout this chapter. Uh, go back and look over your monster, play those games that we have for you on Moodle. Uh, lots and lots of, of opportunities for practice. Good luck studying. What does John say at the end of this video? Good chemistry. Good chemistry.